beginning, the president has been very clear. Shutdown uh, is unacceptable uh, because of the impact that it would have on jobs and families uh, and farms and businesses and communities just across the country. The president is directly involved in the process and has been engaged. That was what the White House press secretary on President Biden's efforts to avert a potential December 5th rail strike, which could freeze U.S. cargo shipments, exacerbate inflation, cost the U.S. as much as $2 billion a day. That's according to the Association of American Railroads. Joining out to weigh in on the state of freight as retailers look to clear their inventory glut amid these critical labor negotiations is the president of Convey, Convoy, its president and chief operating officer, Mark Okerstrom. Thank you so much for being here, Mark. Obviously, it's a busy time of year Good already, year. right, in the freight business, and then you layer on these negotiations on top of it. So I want to start there. What effect would this have on um, the, now you sit on the trucking side of things. What effect yeah. would it have on your industry if this rail strike were to happen? Yeah, well, it would be really significant, particularly this time of year. Uh, about 7,000 of these rail cars are moving every day long haul. It's about 40% of the long haul freight in the U.S. is moved on rail cars. It would take about 470,000 new long haul trucks to essentially come into the market replaces. So it'd be very, very significant. Uh, we don't have the capacity to do it. It would push up diesel prices uh, and really cause a very significant disruption. This is a disruption on the inventory front as well for some of the retailers that are looking to get through the, the necessary items, apparel, the, the SKUs and, and get them to the right locations as well. And so if we see that pushed out even further into 2023, after a holiday season where we're already seeing some signs that consumers are, are being just a little bit more hesitant about how much they're spending. What type of kind of impact does that have to some of the companies and their inventory levels as well that we've been tracking? Well, I mean, these are companies that have already had inventory challenges, you know, going all the way back from 2020, COVID disruption in 2021 continued uh, this year. So I think it would just be adding disruption upon disruption. Now, we're certainly hopeful, uh, given what we saw on Black Friday, what we saw on Thanksgiving, Cyber Monday. I mean, the consumer has got their wallet out for the right uh, opportunity that maybe we can clear out some of this inventory avert this rail strike and things will be back on track. But if we're not able to do that, I think we'll continue to see more disruption through the first half of 2023. Mark, how is the pricing environment for logistics services today compared to six months ago? Well, it's down pretty significantly. I mean, you saw in 2021 through the first quarter of this year, uh, full truckload, which is our focus area, truck prices uh, or freight prices really near record peaks. And then starting in Q2, things started to really slow down. You're seeing spot prices in freight down 30, 35 percent uh, year over year. Again, this is spot sort of last minute uh, truckload capacity that's being sold in the open market. Uh, so it's pretty significant. And that's putting pressure on the owner operator truck drivers. Prices are coming down at the same time as fuel prices are going up. And that's putting the squeeze on the owner operators, which is a big focus for uh, for convoy. And so what do you do about that, I guess? I mean, are there ways of taking capacity out, right, in terms of the number of trucks on the road? Although obviously that doesn't help the owner operators either. Is there a way of, uh, yeah. of max maximizing and putting together loads in trucks? You know, how do you address it? Yeah. Well, I think Convoy is really addressing the core of this. One of the core problems for owner operators is really utilization. Uh, about 35% of the miles that are driven by trucks in the U.S. every single day are driven empty. They're driven empty, but they're still burning fuel. Uh, and what Convoy has done is digitally connected owner operators uh, onto our platform, and we provide freight services to largely Fortune 500 shippers. And by taking you know this large, consistent volume of freight, uh, we're enabling owner operators to bundle it together and essentially be more efficient, allowing them to earn more money, even amidst uh, some of these challenges we're seeing with rising fuel prices. When do you see a changeover coming in terms of the types of trucks that are being used? I mean, we, we've heard increasingly from companies like Tesla and a more sustainable uh, long haul truck that could be leveraged for the industry. You know, do you think that's something that's a near term reality or are we talking, you know, five, 10 years out uh, for even some of the most environmentally sustainable, but also even in some cases, maybe autonomous trucking to be coming forward? 
Yeah. You know, I think it's a medium term type thing. I mean, certainly there's been forward thinking automators, automakers uh, like Volvo. I think that you mentioned previously uh, that's also big in the trucking industry, um, you know, right here uh, in Seattle. You know, of course, we've got uh, the makers of Peterbilt and, and et cetera that are, uh, you know, building EV trucks. So it's coming, but it's going to take a while. Uh, infrastructure has got to be built. Uh, the battery battery capacity is essentially got to be there to haul these big heavy loads. Uh, but I think it'll get there. And you know they say change happens slowly, and then it happens quickly. So uh, we'll see. But it's probably a five five year horizon. Certainly not next year that we'll see mass adoption. And Mark, there's been a shift really over the past two quarters, and and people uh, are spending more on experiences like travel. How is that impacting the outlook for logistics services next year? Well, this has been one of the things that has really led to some of the tapering off of freight uh, movements in the U.S., in addition to the inventory uh, excess and, and supply chain issues that we talked about earlier. Consumers are still spending, but they have shifted more of that spend to travel. Uh, we've been hearing words like revenge travel, people saying, I've been cooped up forever. I got to get out there and see the world. I'm going further. I'm going longer. I don't have to come into the office anymore. And that is impacting the amount of money that consumers are are taking out of their wallet and spending on goods. But the spend is still at, at pretty strong levels. You, you are the former CEO of Expedia. So you, you have a host of knowledge and a wealth of experience within that travel industry, too. And, you know, Sazi kind of teed it up there a moment ago. But when you think about kind of the broader travel industry, if I may kind of go into your historical wheelhouse there, we've heard of a, a golden yeah. age of travel. Do you believe that? You know, even from what you're hearing from some of your own peers in the industry or in the historical travel industry, what are they saying to you about when corporate travel might even come back as well right now or if it will even yeah. get back to pre-pandemic levels? Yeah, well, that's the big question. I mean, leisure travel was the first to come back and it has come back with a vengeance. I mean, supply cannot keep up with demand. You're seeing, you know, the issues with the airlines just not being able to keep pilots and staff, uh, you know, TSA not being able to deal with the volume. So the, the consumer is back. But the real question is what happens with the business traveler? People are not yet back to the office all over the country, let alone all over the world. Uh, people have developed new habits. Uh, I think it will come back, but I think it is going to take some time for business travel as we know it, to come back to the levels it was pre-pandemic. All right, extremely generous to uh, take us into your historical experience as well as your current experience <laughs> as well at uh, Convoy. Thank you so much, Mark Okerstrom, President and COO over at Convoy. We appreciate the time.